So today we're joined by Courtney Kennedy. Courtney, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you served on the APOR uh, task force on cell phone research. Um, some of those results, uh, you know, the, the sort of findings and recommendations were released earlier at this conference. What are some things that folks at home could, could take away from sort of advances and things we're learning about how to do research using cell phones? I, I think there's been advances um, in each stage of uh, in each stage of the, the survey process, and that's reflected in all the different chapters in the report. Um, so we know a lot more uh, in terms of operations. Uh, Paul Lavrakis and some of his colleagues did some really excellent work um, gathering cost estimates. So we have a much better idea of uh, the cost estimates for landlines versus cell phone samples and where some of the differences stem from. And so we can better anticipate that at the, the design stage of surveys. Um, in terms of questionnaire design, um, I think we know a little bit more than we did too. Um, people were worried about the length of questionnaires and that we might have to shorten them for cell phone samples and I think that that fear has kind of been alleviated. Um, in terms of non-response, um, we're working to provide more guidance for the APOR membership in terms of how do we calculate response rates. Um, that was kind of uh, an, an open question before and so there's more guidance there. And, some examples, so not only calculating response rates for cell phone samples, but combining cell phone sample response rates with landline sample response rates uh, if you're looking to compute a single estimate for your entire survey. Um, and then weighting, we certainly know, uh, again, there's been a lot of more research in the past couple of years, so we know more than we did before. Um, I think uh, it's, it's fascinating though, so we do know more, but particularly in terms of weighting, there's still a lot of questions that are up for debate. And I think um, a lot of the practitioners have centered it on practices that we're comfortable doing and we sort of know that they work well, but um, we have a long way to go in terms of optimizing the way that, that waiting is done. And so um, there's, there's still a lot more questions to be answered. Um, now, if you could tell us a little bit also about your, you have a paper that's winning an award this evening. Uh, congratulations. Um, and it's on cognitive shortcuts uh, in cell phone survey research. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? That's right. Well, thank you. It was a tremendous honor to uh, uh, to win the, the Seymour Sudman um, Student Paper Award. I was really thrilled uh, about that. So I presented actually the first part of the results last year, and that was um, just looking at, I mean, the research question is how does the data quality in, in cell phone samples compare to the data quality in landline samples? Because um, you know, uh, as more and more people have started doing cell phone survey research, there was questions that it might not be as good in, in cell phones. So, you know, it's logistically possible to, to do a cell phone sample, but is it a good idea? Because if people are distracted or they're not going to give you quality data, then that, that's uh, potentially risky. Um, so what the research design that I used in that paper was actually to try to randomize people to take the survey on either a cell phone or a landline because that way um, we can better isolate the effect of the device. Um, there's been a, a lot of good work done on this topic but the one limitation that the previous studies had is that they were just looking at observed uh, cell phone respondents and landline respondents and we know that those two groups of people differ on a bunch of characteristics in terms of age and maybe education and income and, um, and things like that. So it's, you can do uh, statistical controls to try to account for some of those sample differences, but um, it's always a question of how well those, those controls work. So um, I was thrilled to be able to, to do uh, a randomized design to address this question. And um, by and large, I think the results were positive for practitioners because um, my findings uh, really echoed, I think, what was already the, the main result in the literature, which was there are not major differences in data quality between landlines and cell phones. So you're still going to get reasonably good, accurate answers from uh, cell phone interviews, and so that's a good thing. But what I did find in my research, I tested a lot more, um, uh, a lot more error indicators than had been done so far, so I, it was a little more sensitive to picking up on any differences. And I found a couple significant differences suggesting that cell phone respondents might not be paying as close of attention to the interviewer uh, relative to landline respondents. And so, you know, I think for most survey questions, ones that are kept short and they're kept simple, you're not going to have any problems. And I wouldn't expect at all that you'd see a device difference. But for questions that are really lengthy, that are cognitively complex, then I think that's where you might observe a device difference and that you should be more concerned um, about that. So that, that was kind of the main result. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And congratulations again on your award. Thank you so much.